Hello, my name is Cone of Arc, and welcome to the Tank Encyclopedia's video on the E100. The E100 was a project which is occasionally and somewhat erroneously referred to as a rival to Dr. Porsche's mouse design. This is not strictly true, as the E100 came after the 130-ton Tiger mouse design from Krupp, which was the mouse rival. When the Porsche mouse was approved by Hitler on 3rd January 1943, the Krupp Tiger mouse was abandoned. Shortly thereafter, Ernst Kniekampf, without informing Krupp, gave work on the project over to the firm of Adler at Friedberg to build a simple prototype for trials. This was done despite the lack of experience by the firm in the design or manufacture of tanks and turrets. According to Kniekampf, Krupp was already overburdened with other work, but it lay within Kniekampf's general Entwicklungsreihe versus Panzerkampfwagen framework trying to rationalize tank development in different weight categories. It would be nearly a year later that the failed Tiger Mouse, a vehicle which showed a large amount of promise in simplified production over the mouse, had shown any substantive progress. Although Adler's work on this 100-ton hull project began at the end of June 1943, it would not be until spring 1944 that the program had progressed to the point of anything more than just an idea to produce a test hull. This means that the E100, strictly speaking, started after the mouse was approved, and that it was not a rival to the mouse in any sense. It was not a copy of the Tiger Mouse, but a further development from it, and was a promising step towards the rationalization of German tank production in World War II. The Krupp 130-ton Tiger Mouse had been a logical rival to the Porsche Mouse, using already available components from the Tiger II and Panther projects which had been designed and tested. From the engine to the suspension, the Tiger Mouse would have been substantially heavier than both of those vehicles, but it would be much easier to produce, operate, and maintain than the Porsche Mouse because of those shared components. In contrast, the Porsche Mouse, almost every element had been designed from scratch. There was, by the end of 1942, when Krupp was seeking production orders, only three elements left to resolve for the Tiger Mouse. The first was the engine. A 700 horsepower Maybach HL230 P30 had been selected for expediency, in the absence of the 1000 to 1100 horsepower supercharged version promised to be ready in time for production by September 1943. Second were the transmission and steering, although the L801 steering system from Tiger II could still be used whilst the Tiger Mouse was still planned with the 700 horsepower HL230 P30 engine. When the new engine was ready, the steering system and transmission needed to be strengthened to deal with the additional stresses. Work on that element was already underway and would be ready in time for production of the vehicles. Finally, the least of the problems with the Tiger Mouse was the desire for a lighter turret. The original had weighed 45.5 tons and constituted an excessive proportion of the weight of the vehicle due to its heavy armor. Waffen Prüfungsem Sex had pressed for a much lighter turret, although by the end of 1942 this does not appear to have progressed, as the vehicle was still weighed just shy of 130 tons. If Krupp had started to play around with ideas for reducing the weight of the turret, this would have to have involved a significant reduction in the armor protection offered. This is due simply to the fact that the steel armor of the turret was the single largest contributor to the overall weight. Reducing the turret weight to between 25 to 30 tons would have meant that the vehicle would weigh around 110 tons. Coincidentally, when the 130-ton Tiger Mouse was resurrected in 1943, it was in the class of a 100-ton tank. The first mention of this new 100-ton project was on 18th March 1944, when Krupp's representative learned that a wooden model of this new tank was going to be inspected by the end of the month by representatives from Waffenprüfungsem Sex. This was after Director Jensch from the firm of Adler in Frankfurt had handed over the drawings, presumably Krupp's drawings from the previous January. At a meeting at the end of May 1944 between Krupp and Knikampf, it was confirmed that the E100 was essentially just the 130-ton Tiger Mouse with a modified suspension. Adler had been working on the E100 hull project since 30th June 1943 and had slowly been assembling parts at Paderborn, but little had really been done until the spring of 1944 when Krupp was to learn of the project. Krupp representatives, rather understandably, appear to have been annoyed by what they saw, as their hull design, a design which was rejected in January 1943, given to another firm for development. It could be speculated that the reason for the involvement of Krupp was that someone had to assemble the hulls, and they were the only firm able to take the armor plates and weld them together to produce a hull on which those parts could be assembled. 
Regardless of being circumvented, Krupp appears to have fulfilled whatever obligation was being asked of them regarding the E-100 Fargestell, and by 15th January 1945, assembly of the hull was well underway at Haustenbeck. At this time, the hull was awaiting its spring suspension to be fitted, and the assembly of the fuel lines. Other than those parts, the majority of the automotive elements had been installed and the track guard sections had been delivered. There was also a stock of the transport tracks on hand, although the combat tracks had not arrived. The rest of the internal components in the fighting compartment were in the process of installation, after which the final drivetrain components, such as the steering system, brakes, final drives, and drive shaft, would be installed. The report on the production status of this test hull also requested information about the turret, so that a means of mounting it onto the hull could be arranged. Further work on the assembly continued through these first months of 1945, but with the war situation collapsing, the vehicle remained unfinished when the site was captured by Allied troops in May 1945. What the Allies found was a hull with the engine, transmission, and steering system fitted. The combat tracks missing in January 1945 had arrived and the springs had been fitted, but the drive sprocket tooth rings were still missing. The E-100 followed the same path in automotive terms as the work on the 130-ton Tiger Mouse which preceded it. It was initially to use a Maybach HL 230P30 engine delivering 700 horsepower at 3000 RPM. Although on the 130-ton vehicle this would have delivered an anemic power to weight ratio of just 5.4 horsepower per ton. What it did mean was that it could use an existing transmission and steering system and still manage a top speed of just over 20 km an hour. This would overstress the Henschel L801 steering system, but was an expedient option to try and produce this test hole quickly. The transmission selected was the 8-speed Maybach Ulvargatrieb OG402060 b which was limited to being able to handle 800 horsepower, but a new system would be required to handle more power from a new engine. The fact that Waffen, Prufungsem, Sex, and Krupp were both wanting a system capable of handing up to 1200 horsepower for the Tiger Mouse as far back as November 1942 adds yet more credibility to this thought. This led to the second scheme for the drivetrain of the E100. This scheme used a 1200 horsepower Maybach engine connected to an 8-speed Mechydro mechanical slash hydraulic type transmission and steering unit combined. Working together, this new engine and new transmission would have allowed the new E100 design to have an improved power to weight ratio and manage 40 km an hour. Unlike the original E100 scheme which retained the common front wheel drive system on German tanks, this scheme would have placed the transmission at the rear with the engine compartment being longer and further forwards. In turn, this would have brought the turret further forwards which would have resulted in a very different looking E100. Sadly, no drawings remain of this layout as Adler destroyed many of their drawings at the end of the war. Indeed, the only reason the general layout of the E-100 with the modified Mouse 2 term is known at all is because the Allies had draftsmen from Adler redraw them after the war from partially burnt originals. The only substantive differences between the 130-ton Tiger Mouse and the E-100 was the suspension. Gone on E-100 was the Tiger 2 style torsion bar suspension. Instead, the tank was to adopt an external Belleville washer-type suspension system, omitting the torsion bars under the whole floor. This would save weight, improve simplicity, and reduce space being wasted inside the hull, meaning the hull could be lower. Further, it also allowed for an escape hatch to be fitted into the floor, which would have been difficult with a torsion bar design. The Belleville washer system relied upon coiled springs, although delivery of them to the E-100 project was delayed as they had been shipped by train to the wrong location in January 1945, and by the middle of the month had still not arrived. This system had been developed by Dr. Lair of MAN and was better than the torsion bar system as it reduced the pitch rate of the vehicle, making it more stable on the move. The Belleville washer system used a pair of overlapping wheeled guide lugs which were suspended on the outside of the hull by a pair of double spiral coil springs, on the inside of the hull, there was very little space used up as only the shock absorbers for the system impinged on the crew space. It is surprising for a very heavy vehicle like the Tiger Mouse that the turret was relatively poorly protected. The hull of the E-100, just as the Tiger Mouse before it, was extremely well protected with 200mm of armor angled at 60 degrees at the front on the glacius, sides 120mm thick, and additional heavily armored demountable side sections and 150 millimeters at 30 degrees at the back. The turret, in contrast, provides less protection on all sides to the hull, with a front 200 millimeters thick angled at 30 degrees, 
sides just 80 mm thick at 29 to 30 degrees, and a rear 150 mm thick at 15 degrees. The turret sides, therefore, were only the same thickness as the sides of the Tiger I, albeit with some shallow angling. The same protection for the turret sides on this substantially larger turret was provided for on the Tiger II Syrian term, but providing a much smaller turret. It could be questioned why the rear armor was 150mm thick on the turret, but heavy armor on the turret rear obviated two problems. The first was reducing the chances of mistaken friendly fire from behind destroying the tank, and the second was that it added a lot of weight to the back to help counterbalance the enormous weight of the front of the turret. For all the heavy armor protection on the E100, it is perhaps remarkable that the turret sides were left so poorly protected compared to the rest of the vehicle. The heavy armored side plates, for example, could have been scrapped from the design to save weight to make the sides of the turret thicker to match the protection levels of the hull sides. But instead, a vehicle whose armor everywhere else was all but immune to the majority of allied tank guns was otherwise remarkably vulnerable on the turret sides, a flaw identified already on the Tiger II. Obering Raba of Porsche reported on 17th May 1944 that the turret for the planned E100 weighed just 35 tons and marks a reduction in armor from the Mouse II turret. This can be confirmed as being the basic design of the Mouse II turret by considering a timeline of the events of the Mouse term development. When in 1945 the Allies captured Adler's works, they found many files had been burned. Under their supervision, drawing 021A38300 was redrawn from the burnt scraps of the original. That drawing showed the original mouse-shaped turret from the Type 205 dating back to the end of December 1942 January 1943, rather than the Mouse II term which was the turret intended. The reason for this is fairly clear. The Adler workers were simply working off the leftovers from the Tiger Mouse program, and this was the Krupp turret shown on that hull when they redrew it with their suspension changes. This accounts for why the turret retains so many early mouse features, such as the side viewports, rear crew hatch, and the lack of coincidence rangefinder. The turret weighed in excess of 50 tons and was abandoned long before E100 was even a glint in Heidekamp's eye. E100, in fact, could not mount such a heavy turret. That was why they had to lighten the mouse two term to make it work down to just 35 tons. Depictions of the E100, therefore, with this turret are incorrect, even though they are shown in the recreated original drawing. Adler Werker employees, after all, were not contending themselves with the turret design, but with the completion of the hull for trials and awaiting a turret which was a separate development. The report from Rabba on 17th May 1944 confirms that the turret selected for the E100 was the Mouse II term Krupp was designing with the improved rangefinder. The turret was to have the sloped front with the armament mounted on trunnions on the outside rather than on the inside and with the guns stacked, the 7.5cm gun KWK L24 over the 12.8cm KWK L55. There was, at the end of May 1944, a discussion between Krupp and Kniekampf on a change in the planned armament for this experimental 100-ton tank, with the focus moving from the 128 centimeter 7.5 centimeter partnership carried over from the mouse and back to consideration of a 15 centimeter gun. The Porsche mouse had originally been intended for an option for a 15 centimeter gun as well, but this had been effectively dropped on the mouse too, as the 12.8 centimeter gun was, after all, available and highly effective at what was required from it, namely penetrating enemy structures and armor. The partially completed E-100 hull was uncovered by the British and shipped back to the UK in 1945 for examination. The sheer bulk of the hull alone created problems and slowed the shipping, indicating perhaps just how impractical a 100 plus ton tank would have been for Germany in 1945. Back in the UK, the vehicle was thoroughly examined and sadly was later disposed of, chopped up for scrap in the post-war austerity of a nation which had bankrupted itself to defeat Germany. The development of the E100 was a drawn-out and complex affair. Like other German heavy tank projects, the E100 was heavier and more complicated than originally planned as the size, shape, and features of the tank had to be made to conform to the rail gauge, as the suspension and in particular the turrets were changed from one project to another. The redrawn blueprint certainly has caused some confusion post-war, but the idea of a 1944-45 tank project using a turret from 1942 remains a conundrum. Regardless of whether it had that Type 205 term or the Mouse II term, though, the project was a failure, which did not address the fundamental weakness in German tank design or armor theory. 
No single design or single vehicle was going to deliver a victory for Germany in World War II, and whilst we can, with the benefits of history, admire some of the technical achievements for making such a large and heavy vehicle, we should also consider that Germany was abandoning vehicles half its weight when they broke down for lack of being able to recover them. With crippling fuel shortages adding a new, bigger, and thirstier vehicle, and one which surpassed any easy means to recover in combat if it was immobilized, the E100 was merely a distraction from the general German war effort. Thank you very much for watching this video on the E100. Please let me know what you think of it in the comments down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to the Tank Encyclopedia's YouTube channel for more videos like this.